Good morning, Bucknoters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, December 17th, 2021. I am Dave Biddle. I am joined by Patrick Murphy. I am finally off jury duty, Bucknoters. I was on jury duty, which I will say was one of the most interesting experiences of my life. Full disclosure, I did not want to get selected when I had to go in and be part of the jury pool. I was hoping that they wouldn't select me. And now I'm glad they did. I'm glad they did. I hated to be away from Bucknuts for a few days, but... um, it's one of those experiences that I think everybody should experience once in their life, at least once. So that's my public service announcement for today. Patrick Murphy, let's get down to matters of business. Let's look at Buckeyes that are either going to be staying or going. Guys that are kind of on the fence, whether to jump to the NFL or not. We got great news last night. The Buckeyes did. Cam Brown is going to stay. Everything that he said to the media yesterday, I'm sitting there thinking, oh, he's gone. I think he was kind of trying to like you know, set it up so he could have his, his moment in the sun and, and good for him. Good for him. But Cam Brown, we'll start with that. Cam Brown coming back. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, Cam Brown's not the first guy who said one thing and then announced, uh, well, he didn't say he was leaving, but led, the, led us to believe that, as you said, his comments were certainly more in that direction. I was a little surprised with the announcement, just given what he'd said and kind of what uh, what the situation is at Ohio State. I know a lot of people I've I've read on our boards. I've talked to people I know that are are really down on Ohio State's secondary and disappointed they didn't, you know, pursue Eli Ricks and things like that. I'm actually excited to see some of these young guys. Ryan Day said the same thing the other day. I will be interested to see. I think Cam Brown's talented, no doubt, but is there is this a seven banks type situation? You know, we've al- we already know Denzel Burke's the number one guy. Do some of these young guys make a big jump this year? And, and does he get passed? Obviously he's had conversations with the coaching staff. It'll be a different coaching staff to some degree, at least next year, but I- I'll be interested to see. I just think these young guys are, are going to make moves this off season. I fully believe that. I think that you're going to see more of, of some of the younger young cornerbacks, the the kids that were freshmen this year, next year, um, even some of the sophomores. So it'll be interesting to see where Cam Brown is come this time next year. But I also don't think there were a ton of pro prospects given he's just played one season really after the injury last year. And I do think coming off an Achilles, he'll probably be closer to 100% next year. So I, I'll be interested, but I was a little bit surprised by by the move. Like you said, I thought he was gone. It's, it's fantastic news for the Buckeyes because I, I think those guys were playing really well as the starting corners this year, Cam Brown and Denzel Burke. And the fact that they're getting both their starting corners back next year is huge. All right, let's look at guys that are still on the fence. Um, Zach Harrison admitted to us he's on the fence. He did say he is leaning one way or the other. He didn't want to say which way he's leaning, but he did admit he is leaning one way or the other. I would surmise Seven Banks is another guy that that might be uh, a little bit on the fence. I think he should come back. That doesn't mean he will. There's been a lot of guys I thought should come back that um, that did not over the years. And some guys that surprised me that came back. You know, Haskell Garrett was a guy that I did not think he was going to come back uh, for this year. Chris Olave, I did not think he was going to come back. So, uh, and Cam Brown, just uh, as yesterday, we're walking out of there. I'm thinking Cam Brown's not coming back. And then and then he did. Um, Nicholas Petit Ferrer, Patrick's another one that might be, I think he's probably going to leave. But maybe he's considering it. Uh, who are some, you know, talk about some of those guys that might be on the fence and what you think they're going to do. Well, Seven Banks, we'll, I'll start with him. He's a guy who walked on senior day. Now, so did Cameron Brown. And Cameron Brown took part in senior tackle. So I guess that's not as big of an indicator as I thought. But uh, everything I've heard is that Seven Banks is, is on his way out. I think that this was from the beginning of the year, he thought this would be his last season at Ohio State. Now things certainly change. And, and if he thinks he can improve his draft stock, you know, he wants to play another year with the Buckeyes. He definitely can, but I would be surprised by that one. Zach Harrison's interesting because most guys high, as highly recruited as he is, three, three years is their game plan. It doesn't always work out, but, but a lot of kids think that way. Zach Harrison just is different, right? I mean, we, we knew that from the recruiting time when he didn't, you know, disclose any information. No one knew what he was doing. So 
That's a tough one to read. I think that there are teams that would certainly value Zach Harrison, even though he hasn't had the kind of career that some of the other Ohio State defensive ends have had. But certainly there is the potential, uh, the physical abilities there that the NFL teams would value. Nicholas petit Frere, I thought it was interesting yesterday in the group of guys that we talked to, he was not one of them. And it was, you know, a lot of the older guys, you know, we did have some young guys, but he's usually a guy they put out in situations like that. Now, it could be he had a final. It's finals week at Ohio State. It could be he had something else going on. It could just be he didn't want to talk that day because he's talked to the media a lot. Um, We've already talked to him since the Michigan loss. But interesting, he wasn't a part of that. I think he's gone as well. He's started two years. He's shown he can play right in, left tackle. Maybe he could help his value coming back, but I get the sense that that he's ready to move on. He's been at Ohio State four years, uh, finished his degree. He talked about that and how he wanted to walk on senior day because of that. So that that would be my inclination um, with him. Was there another one you mentioned there? No, that was it. That was really it. I mean, uh, Petit Ferrer, Seven Banks, Zach Harris. So now that we know that Cam Brown's coming back. I mean, yeah, I, mean I guess Garrett Wilson, but I think everyone. Oh, he's good. gone. Yeah. In uh-huh. fact. In fact, speaking of Garrett Wilson, let's talk about the Rose Bowl and look at guys yeah. that might sit out the Rose Bowl. I mean, not only is Garrett Wilson not coming back next year, Buck Nutters, I mean, you can just mark that down. He hasn't made that official, but he's not coming back. We're hearing he's probably not going to play in the Rose Bowl. Again, that's not official, but I've mentioned that on the show, um, you know, uh, last week. Definitely wasn't this week, so I haven't done a show this week, but I mentioned it on the show a couple different times last week. Garrett Wilson probably not going to play in the Rose Bowl. Who else do you think might not play? What about Alave? Alave was supposed to come out yesterday and did not to meet with us. Again, you could look into that or, or you could not look into it. I remember when Denzel Ward was supposed to meet with us a couple different times leading into the Cotton Bowl. That raised red flags to me, um, both on campus media day and actually in Dallas. He didn't, wasn't there. I'm thinking, ah, I bet Denzel Ward's going to sit out, and he did. That doesn't mean Chris Alave will sit out, but that's what I'm keeping an eye on. Haskell Garrett's one that I'm keeping an eye on. And to a certain extent, Patrick, Nicholas petit Ferrer. although I do think I, I do think NPF will play in this game, even if he turns pro. But what do you think is going to happen with, uh, you know, guys like Olave and Haskell Garrett? You think they're going to play? Chris Olave to me is the interesting one because obviously he came back not to play in a Rose Bowl, but kid from Southern California clearly just loves the Buckeyes. And that's not to say that other guys who may or may sit out the game don't, but, you know, he's invested a lot in this program. He was one of the guys that when they've lost in the the playoff has been the most disappointed when we've talked to him after the game. So I think it would, I would think Chris Olave plays, he's back at home. He doesn't want to go out on a loss like that to Michigan. I think he plays, you know, obviously there's a risk there. We've seen it. We saw it firsthand um, against Notre Dame when the linebacker got hurt and his career was never the same. So I certainly understand why a guy like that may not, but I think he plays, Haskell Garrett's an interesting one because he doesn't have a ton to gain by playing in the game. Um, he's, you know, he's not from California. A lot of the guys we've talked to that have been more excited, been the most excited about the game have brought up being close to home and things like that. Um, so I could see that potentially. It seems to me that most of the guys that sit out are the, the juniors that, are declaring early. I know that that's not all of them, um, but I think a lot of seniors want to go out on the right note. That doesn't mean they won't, but um, you know, I could see both those guys playing just to, to end their career the right way, given, you know, the, the bad taste of the Michigan game. Now, if, if, if they're really worried about the injury thing, I can certainly understand that. I respect that decision, but I think, I think they both probably play if I'm, if I'm guessing. All right, let's talk about urban Meyer, the topic of the week. We don't need to get in the weeds and give all hot takes about what we think about Urban Meyer's tenure in Jacksonville. I, at this point, everybody's given their opinion on that. I frankly don't even care. What I do find interesting, and I have an opinion on this. I'm curious to get yours. I'll give mine in a moment. Will Urban Meyer coach again? Probably. I mean, the, that's what the guy does, right? I don't uh, – I, I mean, I said this, and I know you said this, when he left Ohio State and, you know, even after he'd made comments about not – not coaching and being retired and things like that. I mean, it just, it's in his DNA. You know, he, he, I think will want to coach now, given all the stuff that's come out about his time in Jacksonville, which I think if you paid attention to what what he did at Florida, what he did at Ohio state, some of it is, is alarming, but 
I don't, you know, he was winning at those programs. So I don't think that stuff comes out as much. Maybe that deters teams from hiring him, but I think give it a few years again, he'll be back. His name will certainly be mentioned. And I think he will be back. I doubt it's in the NFL, but maybe, um, you know, maybe an NFL team takes a risk, but I certainly could see him back at the college level. Maybe not even at a, a marquee program. Maybe he goes, you know, to, to a lesser program. The one thing that I don't think I've seen this thrown around, I've been asked about this by some friends. I don't think he comes and takes like an analyst job at Ohio state or anything like that. To me, urban's a guy who needs to run his own show. And, you know, I don't think even his good relationship with Ryan day, I don't think he wants to, you know, be in the background or not be in control. And that's not a negative. I just think that's the, the kind of guy he is, the way he's wired. So it wouldn't surprise me if he ends up taking it some time, uh, maybe ends up back on, on one of the college football shows like he did before. And then as, as he gets that itch again, I think he'll, he'll be back somewhere at some point. He's still young enough. It's not like he's ready to retire in my mind. I agree 100%. In fact, I'll go a, a step further. I, you said probably. I'll say definitely. There is no way he's going to go out like that. There's no way he's going to go out with this embarrassment of 13 games in Jacksonville and getting fired. He will coach again. It won't be um, right away. It certainly won't be in 2022, in my opinion. Maybe 2023 at the earliest, probably more like 2024. Eventually, he will lead a college football program again. And so that's reason number one I think it's going to happen is he just does not want to go out like that. Um, you know, he wants to preserve his legacy and you know, go out on his own terms and, and get one more shot at this. Second of all, as we all know, there's a long list of coaches we can think of. We can just start naming them of uh, and we would leave tons out that we probably thought at the time, man, is this guy ever going to coach again? Is anybody going to want to hire Lane Kiffin again? Remember when Sark when Sark was um, fired at USC, it was because he got plastered at a had a boosters thing and was just talking all kinds of nonsense you're thinking is sark ever going to coach again hugh freeze is hugh freeze ever going to coach again all these guys have jobs right now urban myers won three national championships yeah he failed at the nfl level right now everybody's got hot takes that he's not going to coach again and this and that he will coach again he absolutely will coach again so all right um all right last thing here i, I want to get into jim Knowles. you and i talked about it the day after it happened here on the Bucknuts morning five I love everything about this. We got a chance to talk to some of the defensive players yesterday about this, Patrick. They have not met him yet, but they're you can tell they're excited. They're excited to meet him. They're, they've, they've done some homework on him and the type of defense that he runs. And we, all, we also now know his, the details of his contract. I love that Ohio State wasn't messing around here. Three years, $1.9 million a year, plus he got a signing bonus of about $150,000. So basically paying him $2 million a year, three-year contract. I love the defense that he runs. He's an interesting type of guy. He's kind of like a Phil Jackson personality with the Zen and uh, the, the yoga and all that. Um, I love everything about this. Not a bad deal to sign right before the holiday season, right, uh, for, for Jim Knowles. But, uh, yeah, I agree with you. Um, I will be very interested. That one of the players, I forget who it was on, on Wednesday or Thursday, said that they were doing – that they were going to talk with him, I think is how they phrased it, uh, on Thursday. So I wonder if they had like a virtual meeting or he had a virtual meeting with some of the defense. Um, so I'll be interested to see as we get closer. The guys seemed a little weary to talk about him at this point. Obviously, they don't know him yet. They still have a defensive coordinator in place in Kerry Combs. Do they? Yeah, that's, I mean, I guess I didn't see Kerry Combs or Matt Barnes yesterday, but uh, know, a defensive coordinator that doesn't call the defense. Uh, it, okay. Go ahead. Sorry. It's just a weird situation right now because these guys are, are kind of sitting there. Ryan day did say when we talked to him uh, at the start of the early signing period that he's had conversations with the coaches about what's going to happen. So, you know, some of these, at least one of these coaches is leaving. So I think this is a really weird situation and I think the players kind of feel that and so they didn't want to go too deep deep into it some of the guys as you said Dave said they've looked into it more than some of the others but I think it's once they get this sorted out once 2022 comes and the Rose Bowls is a Rose Bowl is over he's able to get a staff in place and evaluate these these coaches and, and Ryan Day said they will have a press conference they will discuss him we will get to meet him I'm really looking forward to all of that and, and kind of seeing where this is going to go. Um, you know, I'm interested to just hear his thoughts about this defense, 
because there are the players there to fit what he wants to do in terms of the scheme that he ran at Oklahoma State. Now, maybe he looks at some of the guys and thinks they can do some things differently. Um, Obviously, he's a creative defensive mind. So I'll be interested to see or hear what he thinks about this defense and how he wants to do it. And then I'll be interested to see what we can and kind of glean what we can from it as we get into spring ball and things like that. But, you know, I think that's the story of the offseason for Ohio State. We don't have a quarterback battle. There'll be some interesting offensive line decisions, but we know who the running back's going to be. We know the receivers are going to be. What this defense looks like with a new defensive coordinator, what the staff looks like, who does what, that's going to be the most interesting things for me. We're going to be writing a lot about it, talking about a lot about it this offseason. For sure, and he's going to have a ton of returning starters at his disposal, Jim Knowles will, and maybe they'll have a couple guys in the transfer portal as well, and I think they'll get a, as I've mentioned on the show many times, I think they're going to get a tight end in the portal eventually. They, they didn't get the kid from Oklahoma. The, the, I, I think they're still going to land somebody, a blocking first type of tight end. Great stuff out of Patrick Murphy. Thank you to Patrick. Thank you to all the listeners out there for tuning in the show. We appreciate that very much. Hope everyone has a great day and a great weekend. Let's have the Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. 